the giant southern lizard. This description perfectly embodies the power in which the Giganotosaurus had during its existence. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host bringing you another case study on one of the largest predators to ever walk our planet. As always, if you enjoy, then don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's hit this time machine. Origins and Evolution The Giganotosaurus lived during the late Cretaceous period approximately 98 to 94 million years ago. Its fossils have been found in South America, specifically Argentina. It belongs to the family Carcharodontosauridae. This family includes other large theropods like Carcharodontosaurus and Mapusaurus. It seems this family was quite prevalent within a lot of continents by the early Cretaceous. I mean, we see Carcharodontosaurus in Africa, Acrocanthosaurus in North America, and Giganotosaurus in South America. If you ever wondered what the family tree looks like, well, here you go. But being a large theropod, what was the Giga built like? Physical Attributes it should be no surprise to anybody that the Giga was large, especially because it is one of the few theropods that could contend with Tyrannosaurus in terms of size. The average Giga was no slouch, measuring a total length of 12.4 meters and a height of 4 meters. As for its weight, it certainly was impressive. I've got it to an average of around 8.5 tons. However, when we look at the upper limits, it seems that the Giga may have even reached 10.1 to 10.4 tons. With these larger weights, this would increase both its length and height, being around 13.5 meters long and 4 meters tall. Although the Giga's jaws weren't necessarily evolved for bone breaking, it still was capable of doing such. However, it wasn't faced with and herbivores so it never had to specifically evolve to counter such prey options. Rather, their highly serrated teeth likely were built for slicing. A study from Snively in 2021 estimated a bite force of around 25,000 newtons, which is one powerful bite. And yes, yes I know, it surely wasn't as strong as the Tyrannosaurus, but still, in its own regard compared to other theropods, it was still quite impressive. And arguably even better than the Tyrannosaurus, it had a solid neck rotation, which gave the skull a good degree of movement. The Giga's jaws were also built in a way where it was capable of delivering bites in a quicker succession than that of the Tyrannosaurus. Also, due to its stream-like physique, it is definitely conceivable that the Giganotosaurus would have been able to outpace the Tyrannosaurus in terms of movement speed. Why are we talking about this? Well, there's more solid evidence in terms of the Tyrannosaurus speed, so we can use that as a base to get our Giga speed. Referring to William Seller's article, he proposed that the Tyrannosaurus could achieve speeds of around 19 kilometers an hour. Therefore, it is reasonable to infer that the Giganotosaurus likely surpassed this range, especially using the collaboration of a CLR and Mendes assertion that the Giga could have potentially reached around 30 kilometers kilometers an hour. So despite its massive size, it certainly moved quickly. And with such quick pace, what environment was this Giga running through? Distribution and Habitat the exact distribution and habitat of the Giganotosaurus is linked to the geological features of the region during the late Cretaceous. Their fossils have been discovered in the Candelaros Formation, which was characterized by diverse environments. These environments, which were likely inhabited, included semi-arid areas to more lush forested regions to even swampy floodplains. I'd say that this just about shows how adaptable this apex predator was. Its environment would have been populated by a variety of dinosaurs and prehistoric creatures, creating a complex ecosystem. But what exactly did this predator hunt? Hunting. Being the apex predator of its ecosystem, Giganotosaurus was practically open to hunting nearly any organism within its vicinity. But it wouldn't all be easy just because it was large. It did have to deal with its fair share of dangerous prey items, which could mortally wound the Giga if it wasn't careful. As for its overall hunting strategy, I think that as with most predators, especially one of this size, ambush hunting would have been useful. Especially considering it moved quicker than some of the other heavier theropods, it meant that it could close the distance sooner, giving the prey less time to react, and if it had to, it could run it down. Down. From my research, it seems that the main prey items that would have been on the menu included sauropods. However, unlike what many people believe, it didn't hunt down Argentinosaurus. They actually didn't coexist, instead there was another member of its family, being Mapusaurus. Though they still preyed on some other sauropods, which were around its own size. This includes Limaeosaurus, which according to researcher of paleontology Gregory S. Paul, weighed around 7 tons and could have measured around 13 metres in length. And then there was the larger Andosaurus, which seems to have weighed around 14 tons, with the possibility of it exceeding this weight. It also reached over 15 metres in length and 5 meters in height, so certainly a big boy. There is the possibility that he may have hunted other sauropods, including Rheosaurus, and one that I'm just going to nickname Nop. 
However, as for knob, it's quite fragmentary, so we don't really know its size. But just for excitement's sake, I have seen that there is a possibility that you lived with a larger titanosaur. However, they are indeterminate, so we can't really say for sure. Now, it's very clear that the main target of the Giganotosaurus would have been sauropods. Sure, if there was anything smaller around, it would have definitely done so, but sauropods would have been the main thing on the menu. And as they were around its own mass, it just meant that it could have an easier time taking him down, rather than let's say an Argentinosaurus, which would have weighed 50 plus tons. So there is a lot of debate on how they would have hunted. I've seen people say flesh grazing to just taking them down outright. To be honest, after much research, I could imagine them taking these sauropods down just, you know, outright. I mean, its prey items weren't large enough for the tactics to even be worth it to, you know, bleed them out. And I believe that with an ambush, they could have taken down any one of these sauropods. It could have used its powerful jaws to slice into its prey, which may have damaged the bone due to its strong bite, but at the very least, it would have left deep gashes. Due to its neck being able to rotate impressively, it could have manipulated smaller prey or just manipulated its jaws to hit multiple places. This, mixed with its fast closing jaws, meant they could have heavily damaged prey items in a short period of time, which means they could take down their prey immediately or bleed them out. Though they are extinct, so we can't really say for sure. But being such powerful predators, could anything in its ecosystem pose a challenge to it? Competitors. As for competitors, well, not really. An adult Giganotosaurus didn't have any carnivore in which it would have to fear. I mean, there were some smaller theropods, but they only reached maybe like two meters in length. And as for height, they would have reached like up to your knee. So nothing really scary. Although the closest non-Giga theropod that there was with at least a decent size was Equinitosaurus. That pronunciation is rough, which was an Abelosaurid. It's likely that this theropod would have measured around seven meters in length and 2.4 meters at the head, and it would have weighed under a ton. Now true, this theropod didn't stand a chance against an adult Giga, but I think we can pretty much all agree that it's guaranteed that if the opportunity arose in which it could take down a younger Giga, then it would do so akin to what predators do today. Other than that, the only competitor a Giga would have had to worry about would be another Giga. I mean, it makes sense. Interspecies conflict would always occur, whether over territory, food, or mating rights. Conflict was inevitable. Now, all right, sure, it wasn't constant, but they were the only species that posed a threat. This seems to be common with most megatheropods, where the main threat is just each other. But if they were so successful, then what caused their ultimate extinction? Extinction. As far as the extinction of this apex predator is concerned, well, there isn't any pinpoint reason. It's not as simple as asteroid goes boom and yada yada extinct. It seems a bit more complex. As it seems that this time around, a lot of this family, as long as with other allosaurids in general, went extinct, allowing for tyrannosaurs to take over. I've seen people suggest that the tyrannosaurids outcompeted them, but I don't believe that this is the case. Rather, it's more likely that a changing environment affected food webs and in a way disfavored allosaurids worldwide, making them go extinct, which left room in the ecosystem for tyrannosaurids and abelosaurs to get big and diversify. Its extinction was probably part of the Cenomonian Turonian boundary event, which was an event of massive paleoenvironmental change associated with an episode of significant biotic turnover. I've seen estimates from 45% all the way up to 70% of extinction in that 90 million year time. And ultimately with that, the second largest megatheropod to exist became extinct. Now we've reached the end of the case study. I hope you all enjoyed this video on one of the most interesting megatheropods to exist. As, as always, if you did enjoy, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and my secondary channel, which is all about fiction. Also, don't forget to like this video and comment down below if you want to see more content like this. I'll catch you all next time. See ya.